John Overall, Lori Stevens, John Mernan with sports, and Jackie Purcell with the weather. This is the Channel 2 News Late Edition. Good evening. Neighbors battle over noise tonight. Noise created by motorized racing. The Anchorage Racing Association is asking the Anchorage Planning and Zoning Commission tonight to rezone a plot of land near Minnesota and International Airport Road. The ARA wants year-round motorized racing on that property, but area residents don't want the noise that goes with the racetrack. Tonight, both sides voice their opinions. Some living in the area say a racetrack will hurt property values. But the ARA held its first race back in October, saying motorized racing will help keep troubled teens off the streets. But a group of concerned homeowners don't want the racetrack in their backyard. I was home in October when they were having the race, and you could hear the noise inside the house in the basement. The amount of noise that was being generated was really not acceptable for a residential area. First of all, we're not in any in a residential area. We're quite a ways from it. And as you can hear from all the testimony, there's railroad, there's planes, there's trucks, there's cars. And let's be reasonable about this. It's only one night a week. Uh, and like we heard testimony tonight, lawnmowers are running later than that in the summer times. Public testimony is still being heard at this hour. The Anchorage Assembly is scheduled to address the issue tomorrow night. Two Alaska men went on trial today for a deadly mail bombing three years ago. Raymond Sheely and Joseph Ryan are in federal co court in Tacoma, Washington, charged in the killing of Dave Kerr and with critically injuring his wife, Michelle, near Thunderbird Falls. The jury was selected today after a change of venue was granted due to pre-trial publicity in Alaska. Both men face multiple conspiracy and mail bombing counts. Chile is accused of acting as the mastermind, trying to get back at the victim's son for testifying against him in another murder case. Ryan is accused of delivering the parts to make the bomb. Opening statements are expected to get underway tomorrow. Back here in Anchorage, Jason Calamete's future now rests in the hands of a jury. Calamete is charged with first-degree murder for the shooting death of 27-year-old James Roberts two years ago. The jury heard closing arguments today. Mary Georges was there. While Jason Calametti stands trial for murder, his parents and other family members can only sit and wait. A close-knit group that has come to this courtroom every day since the trial began eight days ago. I mean, they still get to judge what, whether he's confessing or what it's about. But the defense says the wrong person is on trial and that a woman named Silk is the shooter. She's got an incredible motive to lie. At trial, Silk testified Calametti and not her shot James Roberts. And as she took that stand and she said to you, yes, I shot James Roberts, she would put herself in danger of being charged with murder. But police say it was Calametti, then only 17 years old, who shot Roberts in the parking lot of the Northway Mall two years ago. Roberts was shot in plain view of his fiance, who was with them in the car. Four, five, six times she refers to the shooter as the male. Prosecutors say Robert's fiance told police at the crime scene Calametti was the shooter, although she later testified at trial that Silk shot Robert. In a videotaped interview with police shown at trial, Calametti also tries blaming Silk for the murder, but finally confesses that he is the one who did it. There, he says, puts his head down, there is no woman, there is no female. She ain't the one. But the defense says Calametti was only trying to protect Silk, taking the rap for her. Jason, out of confusion and guilt and protectiveness, confessed to the police to something he did not do. To convict Calametti of murder, prosecutors must convince the jury he's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. But with a week of such contradicting testimony, the seed of doubt may have already been planted. Mary Georges, Channel 2 News. If convicted of first-degree murder, Calamete faces a maximum of 99 years behind bars. A charge of attempted murder today for an Anchorage man accused of shooting a good Samaritan. 20-year-old Anthony Frankson was formally charged in Superior Court. He is accused of shooting 19-year-old Robert Lincoln after the suspect sought shelter in Lincoln's home. Police say Frankson told Lincoln he was being chased. After he was let inside the home, Frankson allegedly let someone else in, shot Lincoln in the neck, and then pistol whipped him. Frankson was also charged with robbery and assault. He is being held on $25,000 bail. 
The trial is set for April 10th. O.J. Simpson's behavior on the night of the murders was under the microscope in a Los Angeles courtroom today. In her second day on the witness stand, Nicole Brown Simpson's sister Denise offered more tearful testimony. Brown claimed Simpson at times beat her sister, at other times belittled her, calling her a fat pig while she was pregnant. And she told jurors that on the day of the murders, O.J. had a bizarre and faraway look in his eyes and refused to greet his ex-wife at their daughter's dance rehearsal. It was more of a, um, of a, like a glazed over, kind of frightening, dark eyes. It, it just didn't look like the OJ that we knew. Every time it turned around, he was staring at Nicole. The next prosecution witness also described Simpson as being in a strange mood that day. A surprise plea today in the trial of a dozen Muslim fundamentalists charged with unleashing a reign of terror on New York City. The accused mastermind of those plans pleaded guilty on all counts against him, then agreed to help the prosecution in their case against the 11 co-defendants. Siddig Ibrahim Siddig Ali says he was under religious order to act and that his plans included killing Egypt's president and bombing New York sites, including the United Nations, the Hudson River Bridge, and tunnels. And coming up next on the Late Edition, don't be surprised if there's an unexpected ringing in your ears when you call long distance. And Fort Richardson becomes the target of its own demolition expert. Details next on the Late Edition. The Channel 2 News Late Edition was brought to you in part by Alaska Sales and Service. Serving Alaska since 1944. And by Alaska Regional Hospital. Partners in life. Uh, I've been buying cars from Alaska Sales for 30 years. I have no reason to go anywhere else. I like the friendliness at Alaska Sales and Service. People are really nice to me. My husband believes in Alaska Sales and Service, and they've always treated me right. I have and would recommend Alaska Sales and Service to any of my friends who are looking for vehicles. Alaska Sales and Service met my needs, and I'm going to come back. I like Alaska Sales. They've always treated me well. I'm no pleased with my truck. Alaska Sales and Service is service. Come in today. Alaska Sales and Service. your house have the winter blues? Brighten up your home with the hottest inventory reduction sale at K&W Interiors. Set the mood in any room with Armstrong vinyl flooring starting at only 69 cents a square foot. Add color with Evans and black carpet at $1.25 per square foot, including a 10-year warranty against stains and wear. Lighten up your bathroom with bone or white wall tile as low as 20 cents each. Hurry to the hottest inventory reduction sale at K&W Interiors. Sale ends Monday. Strike it rich during sourdough days at Magnum with Alaska's lowest prices on electronics and appliances. Hundreds of gold nugget bargains like the Sony cordless phone, just $129. This Hitachi 27-inch TV, only $499. This Sony car stereo, just $149. Or this Minolta camcorder, only $499. Plus, the best buys ever on scratch and dent appliances are waiting for you in Magnum's huge upstairs showroom. And we'll grub stake you with Magnum's fast and easy financing. It's a mother load of savings store-wide. Hurry and strike it rich during Magnum's good as gold sourdough days. A Fort Richardson demolition expert is behind bars tonight. 38-year-old James Manella surrendered to military police after holding them at bay for nearly 30 hours. Mary Beth Weber has the story. Rowena Javier is moving back home today. She and her family were evacuated dinner time Saturday. And then they said, you have to go, you have to go, you know. And so we leave with just our clothes on, and we thought it's like, a, like in the movie, like a two-hour thing, it's all over with, so we didn't bring anything. The Javiers and 55 other families live near James Manila, close enough that Army officials felt they would be in danger if Manila decided to trigger the explosives in his house. He had uh, three weapons inside the set of quarters, uh, ammunition, and of course all the makings to uh, make a explosive device. Manila lives here at 225 Akatan, apartment A. 
He barricaded himself inside Saturday afternoon at 4.30. Manila said then he was depressed about a pending court martial over an incident said to have taken place in October on Elmendorf Air Force Base. Officials say he ran into a military police car. He's got five charges against him, including aggravated assault and afterward attempted suicide. But he was free. Well, uh, lots of times it's not uncommon for a soldier who's pending court martial to uh, be staying in his own quarters. If he is uh, no fear of flight and no risk at uh, this particular time, I guess as things changed in his life, he became a risk to himself. Saturday, Manila called us repeatedly, saying he felt his life was over. Due to interference in the Air Force and the Army and to relationships I've had with some people, it appears most of my loved ones are out of my life now. And Without them, I just don't want to continue living. Manila's still at Fort Richardson, but he's being held at the pretrial facility. No one's sure yet what charges will be filed against him. They'll have to wait until the investigation is over. That can take days or months. And while Rowena says the Army took good care of her family the last two nights, she's in no hurry to do it again. We're very happy to go home. At Fort Richardson, Mary Beth Weber, Channel 2 News. If convicted on his first pending court-martial, Manella could face time in Fort Leavenworth Military Prison, or he could be dishonorably discharged. 19-year-old Tommy Harris faces at least seven years in prison for beating a man with a baseball bat. Harris pleading no contest to first-degree assault and robbery. The attack happened last September during a robbery at the Tesoro Station in Palmer. Harris was originally charged with attempted murder, but last month he pleaded no contest to the lesser charges. The unidentified victim was visiting a clerk at the gas station. Some new information tonight about the man who abducted a nine-year-old girl last month. The girl was taken as she walked to her Fairview school January 25th. Police say she was driven as far away as two hours, assaulted, then brought back to Anchorage and released. The suspect is described as a thin white male, about 40 years old. With no solid leads, police have turned to the FBI Behavioral Sciences Unit in Quantico, Virginia for help. According to a profile developed by the FBI unit, the suspect may be acting irritable, depressed and withdrawn, and may be drinking more. Officials are hoping a friend or co-worker will notice these changes and call police. If you have relatives outside of Alaska, phoning home may have a hollow sound to it for at least a few days. Alaska officials say a broken cable shut down long-distance service yesterday. Calls were getting through again by late evening with the help of a satellite instead of the fiber optic cable line. The last time a telephone cable line broke was back in 1993. Both Alaskom and GCR are rerouting calls to satellite. Uh, Alaskom says this break is just off the Oregon coast and repairs could take up to a week at an estimated cost of $1 million. But for now, those dialing long distance should not have any problems. Well, there may be some very few isolated cases, and if that's the case, they need to just tell the operator. But uh, all, all of our people over there, all of our testing shows that no overflow traffic's going through fine. The rural Alaska television network, known as RATNET, is also down. Alaskom had to pull the satellite plug in order to accommodate the rerouted telephone calls. And if you're out there driving tonight, be careful. Very icy roads. And Jackie in right now to tell us about what's going on out there. The main roads aren't too bad. It is the side roads that are generally the problem because of all the melting uh, and that it forms a, like ice rinks <laughs> on local roads. We'll tell you more about the weather forecast in just a moment, so stay tuned. They say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Your friends at Alaska Regional Hospital can help you learn to prevent health problems through classes, risk assessments, and other outreach programs. February is National Heart Month, so take care of your heart with a quick and easy cardiac risk assessment and blood test. Every day, partners in life. Alaska Regional Hospital. It was ice hockey and the friendly competition of sporting events that laid the foundation of Anchorage's Fur Rondi. First known as the Winter Sports Tournament, the added element of a Fur Trapper's Rendezvous brought people together to enjoy a bright moment in the darkness of winter. Through the years, numerous events and activities were added to capture the true spirit and flavor of the Northland and to invite people from around the world to partake in this midwinter festival of fun. Alaskom is proud to present live TV coverage of this year's Rondi only on Channel 2. 
public notice. Right now at both water bits plus location to the vault wall cellar. This is it. Everything for the bedroom sacrifice direct to the public and pennies on the dollar. And pay nothing for one year. Completely water bits starting at 99 bucks. Complete bedroom sets and oak wall units up to $1,000 off. Many items priced below. Wholesale even free delivery and special military discount. Buy with no money down, no interest, no payments for a year. To the vault wall cellar. You better hurry. It's happening right now at water bits plus Anchorage and Fairbanks. I'm Joanne Branlin, and I want to talk to you about Girl Scouting. When a Girl Scout comes to your door to sell cookies, greet them with a smile. And can you imagine how hard it is for them to go door to door? And sometimes the door gets slammed in your face, and sometimes people buy lots and lots of boxes of cookies. So open the door with a smile, buy lots of cookies, and remember this is going for a very good cause. Mild conditions, but things will drop below freezing, at least temperature-wise, so it will be a slick one in the morning. Now let's take a look at what the current conditions are outside. Some ice is still frozen around town, obviously. It's just at freezing. Winds are out of the northwest, 8 miles per hour, 82% humidity. Barometric pressure continues to fall. We've got a system nearing us, and air quality has been in the good category. And as far as the temperatures around town, generally, above normal and mostly into the 30s even along the hillside which is reporting a loss of about 10 inches of snow and also the peak gust and as far as the windstorm over the weekend was about 62 miles per hour out near Rabbit Creek so it was a windy one even last night winds will start to die down by tomorrow morning now we'll take a look at some of the conditions or some of the reasons that are causing those windy conditions it's this storm and actually another storm over the weekend and you can see how far down to the southeast clouds reach even way farther and that is going to be meaning that it's sort of like a corridor for warm, moist air to be coming our way over South Central Alaska on into the interior over the next several days. We've had a weakening storm system along the West Coast, too, so things there are also warm. And here's another one making its way in. But that's expected to move to just about this position, stay there. So what it looks as though we're going to have in terms of weather for the next week is just plain, cloudy, mild conditions. That means it's going to be also messy in some areas, as you can see, by a high of 42 in Anchorage, up to 34 today in Fairbanks. Quite a dramatic, dramatic change as far as the temperature goes there. Mid-30s for the western half of the state and 32 over toward Cold Bay. Even Kodiak Island nearing 40 degrees. And beyond that, for the Panhandle, they had some very wet weather, warm weather, and that looks as though they're going to have more of the same for tomorrow. As far as uh, south central temperatures go, we also had temperatures that were above normal in Prince William Sound, up into the valleys, the peninsula, just about everywhere. Even reports of some lightning being seen just across uh, Kachemak Bay from Homer uh, around Seldovia. So uh, quite some strange weather going on, on uh, over the last uh, a couple of days. Normally, we do not see thunder and lightning in south central Alaska, and if we do, it's generally during the summer. The hot spot in the state of Alaska today is Sitka, while Northway at minus 5 was the cold spot today for the state. Across the lower 48, it seems like winter is more entrenched in other sections of the lower 48, such as the northern tier states on over the Great Lakes and the east coast. They had a lot of snow over the weekend. It looks as though they're going to be uh, in for a little bit more before they get a little bit warmer. The Pacific Northwest, really not too bad. They had a little bit of some light rain in California. Well, not much to talk about, which is good news for them. A hot spot down there was in El Centro, California, and but we'll tell you the forecast for the state of Alaska first. We're going to be seeing some more rain and some clouds up toward Kenai. Temperatures will stay generally into the 30s, uh, maybe just a little bit over 40 for Seward. Mountainous goes to sit in the valley areas will drop below freezing, mostly in the northern sections. It's probably a good bet that in some places around Wasilla and Palmer, 34 will be warmer than it actually is. It's going to be about 30 tonight in Anchorage. We have light rain and snow in the forecast. The gusty winds on along the hillside will continue, but they should start to bit diminish by morning. Now, we could still have some light rain and snow in the morning hours, but that's expected to taper off. Cloudy conditions tomorrow. Highs, well, nearing the 40-degree mark. Now, I want to say these two right here asked for the warmer weather. So if anybody did. did not like the close to 50 degree readings, they were saying, oh, that'll be great. The warmer weather will be great over the weekend. As long as it stays <laughs> and, it, and breakup comes, that would be great. But it won't. It just it won't. It won't. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks, Jackie. Jackie. Welcome back, John Mernan. You've uh, been away for a while. We missed you. Aloha. Yeah. <laughs> Where's our uh, lace? My ties. They're gone.
I drank them all. No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm joking. An upset in college hoops. Details when we come back. Williams and King invites you to save on quality home furnishings during the incredible Thomasville sale. You'll find incredible savings of 25 to 50 percent on Thomasville sofas, chairs, dining rooms, and bedrooms. Choose from in stock or custom order the fabric and pieces to fit your home perfectly. Come on in and see what's new and save 25 to 50 percent during the incredible Thomasville sale at Williams and King at the corner of Benson and Seward. Hello, I'm Jill Waters, Director of Community Education for the Anchorage School District. Our community schools are celebrating 20 years of providing programs for all ages in Anchorage, Girdwood, and Chugiak Eagle River. We'd like to thank the thousands of volunteers and participants who have helped make our community schools the best in the nation. Please join us this year in celebrating the 20th anniversary of the community schools. Contact a community school in your area today for current classes, activities, and volunteer opportunities. Tomorrow on Today, dramatic testimony from Nicole Brown Simpson's sister. What does the jury think? We talk to an expert. Join us tomorrow and see what a difference today makes. Welcome back at an event dominated a year ago by the Nancy Kerrigan attack and ensuing Tanya Harding scandal. A handful of Anchorage figure skaters are strutting their stuff this year. The National Figure Skating Championships for 95 are underway in Rhode Island. And Anchorage Figure Skating Club member Christina Nishimura, seen here at regionals back in December, is in the running for a medal. The 15-year-old skating to a third-place finish this afternoon with her short program in the Novice Ladies Free Skate. Christina, who is best known for her strong, long program, will skate just that on Wednesday in an effort to remain in the top three. Also skating today at Nationals, Anchorage's Sarah Devereaux places seventh in the, Nash, in the nation in junior ladies' figures, while 17-year-old Danny Clausen places sixth overall in the senior men's figures competition. Anchorage skater Derek Stedding begins his national competition Thursday, while Sidney Vogel, a gold medal contender in junior ladies, skates tomorrow. We will keep you posted. The regular season is over in prep pucks, meaning it's playoff time, meaning the last regular season poll is out, and it looks like this. Chugiak stays on top despite a loss over the weekend. Bartlett is still second in service despite that big win over Chugiak stays third. Diamond and East flip-flop at the bottom of the poll. As mentioned, the playoff, regional playoffs are about to begin. It all starts at Ben Bokey tomorrow, which is where we caught up with East this afternoon. The T-Birds are one of those team, teams that no one wants to play. They can be cold or extremely hot. Head coach Rob Larkey, along with another local coach, admits the polls come in handy in an indirect way. When you're number one, you have nowhere but to fall down. And if you're at the bottom of the pile, you have nowhere but to climb up. So no one wants to be number one because everybody's going to come gunning for you. We're number one, and therefore we're probably are the best. And with teenagers, you want to avoid that. And I think it's best to let them always keep striving and seeking their best games ahead of them. And I like, as an optimist, I like to believe somewhere down the road here in the playoffs, but our best hockey is still ahead of us. Service and East play Wednesday. Diamond and West get things started tomorrow night. On to pro pucks, like the Democrats in Washington, the Ottawa Senators have had a rough go of it lately, but not tonight. Ottawa hosting Philly, the most exciting play in sports, the penalty shot. Mark Recchi for the Flyers, denied by Don Beaupre. The Senators post their first shutout in franchise history. They get goals from Alexander Daigle, Alexi Yeshin, and Troy Murray. This is Yeshin's on the power play. Ottawa wins for the first time this season. Cutting up Lindros and the Flyers, three zip. Also tonight, San Jose at Toronto, not a shark attack, but a maple leaf mauling. Dave Anderchik scores two first period power play goals. Toronto nets five man advantage opportunities. They skate past the Sharks 7 3, ending San Jose's six game unbeaten streak. NBA news, the Phoenix Suns suffer a major loss without playing a game. All star Danny Manning will miss the rest of the season. Manning tearing the ACL in his left knee at practice this morning. The ligament needs surgery, meaning Danny is done. Manning vows to return. He suffered the exact same injury six years ago as a rookie with the L.A. Clippers. College Hoops, North Carolina is back on top. The Tar Heels number one in the latest AP Hoops poll. They move up from number two. Kansas up from number three, while UConn last week's number one drops to third. UMass is fourth and Kentucky five. The second five goes like this. UCLA, Michigan State, Maryland. Arizona and Syracuse. And almost before the votes are tallied, there's an upset to report. Second-ranked Kansas 
will fall from number two. Roy Williams team losing on the road. Number 24, Oklahoma State gets them. They were here for the shootout back in November. Big Country Bryant Reeves, a career night, 33 points, 20 rebounds. Second ranked Jayhawks take a tumble. Oklahoma State takes charge of the Big Eight with the 79 69 win at home. And finally, the baseball labor dispute is following the lead from the hockey holdup pushing back the dreaded deadline. Maybe it means they may eventually settle this thing. Today in Washington, federal mediator Bill Ussery met with President Clinton and convinced the press to delay the deadline he had set for today to tomorrow for a settlement proposal. It's not clear what the president can do or what act Congress could take if the deadline is not met. Ussery says he simply needs more time with such high stakes. When you have to write a, a recommendation that would go to the President of the United States and may be used other ways. It takes a lot of time to do that. So we simply ran out of time. Our own best interest to get this done ourselves. Uh, we don't need somebody else telling us what to do. Deadline is 3 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, and I don't know what the deadline means. Just the President's trying to prod them along. A little pressure from the yeah. Pres. Hey, you haven't lost your touch. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. John. Sorry, didn't bring anything back. Yeah, sure oh. you are. <laughs> And just ahead, she's looking for more than just a few good men and women. Rear Admiral Marcia Evans is the highest ranking woman in the United States Navy, and she's here. Her story next. Williams and King invites you to save on quality home furnishings during the incredible Thomasville sale. You'll find incredible savings of 25 to 50 percent on Thomasville sofas, chairs, dining rooms, and bedrooms. Choose from in stock or custom order the fabric and pieces to fit your home perfectly. Come on in and see what's new and save 25 to 50 percent during the incredible Thomasville sale at Williams and King at the corner of Benson and Seward. Arriba, arriba, andale, andale. Ski to Mexico with Challenge Alaska. The ski a thon is back and bigger than ever. Win a Mexican vacation for four, a Caribbean cruise, or a Maui getaway. You'll help raise money for the new Sports and Recreation Center at Alieska. And all you do is ski. The Ski to Mexico Ski-a-thon is February 25th. For information, call 563-2658. Challenge Alaska, giving disability a possibility through recreation. The highest ranking woman in the U.S. Navy is in Anchorage, and part of her mission is to enlist new recruits. Rear Admiral Marsha Evans is here to meet with recruiters and to let the public know the Navy is looking not for just a few, but as many as 57,000 young men and women to fill job openings. The Navy is a very progressive organization and we've opened so many opportunities. The vast majority of the opportunities are open now to women and women are very important members of our team. So uh, it's a good experience for young women as well as young men. Thousands of women are actively serving in the Navy now, and some in the areas that were once only available to men. So if you're looking for a job, Lori, I'm sure she'll <laughs> gladly take your really application. That would really make you happy. I know it. <laughs> Thanks for being with us tonight. Have a good night. The Channel 2 News Late Edition is brought to you in part by Magnum Electronics and Appliances. 54,000 square feet of quality products at unbeatable prices. And by Williams & K. Quality home furnishings and interior design. Here are four questions to ask you.